Hey there, this is Thomas, and this video is all chock full of scholarships that you can apply for all month long in the month of June. I know this is the summer. I know you're in a different mindset than when you're in the school year, but don't let these scholarships pass you by. You could lose out on thousands of dollars by not taking advantage of this opportunity. And I do have a free PDF that's linked down in the description that you can download in order to have the list of scholarships in front of you with eligibility requirements and what you need to know and the links that are in that are clickable. So you can go through this scholarship video with me by clicking on the links, looking and scrolling through the websites as I'm showing you what you need to know. So definitely download that free PDF, go through that with me and find which scholarships are eligible for you so that you you can win those scholarships today. And if you want additional videos like this that go through scholarships, actual websites, and showing you how to win these different scholarships, then subscribe to the channel or just hit the like button so YouTube knows this is the kind of content that you want more of. Without further ado, let's jump straight into the first scholarship. Here we have the Terry Bryant Scholarship. Now, how much is this scholarship? This one is $2,500. Definitely worth your attention. Now, when is it due? It's due June 1st. So like I said, you might be just coming out of uh, high school or college and finishing the school year. So you definitely want to take a look at this before you get too far into the summer. June 1st is when it's due. Now, are you eligible? Well, let's take a look here. You need to be a high school senior with a 3.0 GPA at minimum, and you have to be planning to attend a four-year university. Now, what is it that you have to do? Now, what I like about this scholarship is that it's not an essay. It's a 60 second video. Basically, it's like creating a TikTok or a YouTube short, something that's just a short 60 second clip gets your point across. You're also gonna have to fill out a complete application. You do have to put your transcript in there as well as include a photo. So here is how to apply. Let's go ahead and jump over to the web page itself and we'll get started here. So taking a look at this page, now I do apologize because it is the actual website, then they have this giant banner right here at the top that will be there the whole time. So I'm gonna do my best, but this is the 2022 college scholarship application for Terry Bryant, and he is a lawyer. That's a law firm here. So as we come down here, it does say to apply to this scholarship, a student must submit a short video in response to the following prompt. Now the prompt is if you had up to one minute with your younger self at the time you started high school, what advice would you give on how to stay safe on city streets, whether as a driver, passenger, cyclist, or pedestrian? It does say here the winning application will receive $2,500. So continuing down to the eligibility. This is where it says what we already talked about. It does say uh, it's available to current uh, high school seniors, regardless of race, color, gender, ethnicity, origin, nationality, sexual orientation, or disability. You do have to have a 3.0 GPA or higher, which is what we said and you do have to be planning to attend a four-year university. So here are the instructions. You must include these materials with your entry. And I also apologize for this guy's face down here. This is if you wanted to chat with him. So I don't know who that is, but uh, if you wanted to talk to him, <laughs> there's his face. So uh, you do have to complete an application, a recent photo of the applicant, which is you, then a 60 second video, which we talked about. Now, the interesting thing here is they do say that the video must be submitted via link. So as they say here, you do have to upload the video to a hosting site like YouTube or Vimeo. I would just do YouTube. Obviously, I use YouTube. But I think for most people, it's simple enough to simply create your video, upload it onto a YouTube account. You can just use your normal Google account. You don't have to create a special page. Like if you have a Google account, then you have something to log into YouTube with. It's a pretty simple process. If you're not sure, go ahead and comment like, how do I do that? And I'll show you exactly how to do that um, or I'll you know explain it. So if you need more information on that, go ahead and just let me know. But we're going to continue through here. You do have to do your high school transcript, uh, either unofficial or official. That includes the class rank and size. And then you do have something that's optional. Anytime there's something for a scholarship that's optional, I recommend doing it. But this has one or more letters of recommendation that discuss these things, the applicants' achievements, academic potential, and involvement in their school community. So again, if you have the opportunity to do that, if you have that chance to include a letter of recommendation, I highly recommend doing it. Anytime there's something optional, that's a chance to set you apart, to give additional information that wasn't included elsewhere in the application. So I recommend doing that whenever that is an option. Continuing down here, this is how, how to structure your presentation. So they say, you're encouraged to create a video that will resonate with high school students. So they're telling you your audience. You want this to be aimed at high school students and specifically at the age when most will learn how to drive for the first time and when they will become increasingly independent. So that's kind of your target audience and what you're trying to do. Terry Bryant will choose the winner with a team of judges. So that's kind of how they're gonna select the winner. Um, they're gonna own your entry their use of personal information. The deadline here says June 1st, 2022, so keep that in mind. 
and then a release of information and liability. And this is the actual application right here on the website. So you're going to fill out all this information here, scrolling down your mother's information, father's information, list any unique circumstances affecting your ability to pay for college. So kind of an opportunity here to include some additional information about your financial situation. How did you hear about it? So you would just list this, uh, you know, web page, my, my YouTube channel. Uh, as the how you heard about it, if indeed this is the first time you're hearing about it. And then extracurriculars, any of this information, any clubs or activities that you're involved in, go ahead and put that. And then here's where you put, upload your photo, upload your transcript. And this is where you would put the link to the video because it's going to be uploaded to either YouTube or Vimeo. Provide the URL here and that takes them directly to it. And here's your optional uploads of your letters of recommendation, which again, I recommend doing if you are able to. And then this is sort of, sort of an electronic signature. So signature, you're just going to type your name in and hit submit application and you are all done. Next, this scholarship is called the Pixelplex Biannual STEM Scholarship. Now, how much is this scholarship? This one is $2,000. So that's definitely worth taking some time. Now, when is it due? This scholarship is due on June 5th of 2022. Now, the important question, are you eligible? Well, if you're a U.S. citizen enrolled in an accredited college university in the United States and plan to study a STEM, economics, or a business field of study, then you do qualify for this scholarship. Now, what is it that you're going to have to do? This is a 1,200 minimum word essay. So you want to make sure that you write at least 1,200 words. There is no maximum word count for this particular essay. Now, what else should you know? Well, this scholarship is also due December 5th. So this scholarship is, as it said at the beginning, is a biannual scholarship. So it's due twice throughout the year. So you can apply for this one in June. But if you don't win this scholarship, you can apply again in December. And same thing, kind of the winter and, and winter and summer, once in the winter, once in the summer every year. So keep applying. If you don't win it the first time, you don't have to wait a whole nother year, just about six months and you can try again. Now, here is how to apply. We're going to jump straight into the scholarship website. Now, I will say that I actually like this scholarship website, how they lay it out. They really work clearly and systematically through the steps. So this is the $2,000 uh, Pixelplex Biannual STEM Scholarship. Now, if we scroll down here, they do give us some information here about the scholarship and the information, uh, but it says one student will be chosen from the applicant pool and they will be awarded based on the strength of their written essay. And then the uh, selected student will receive $2,000 to help cover education expenses. So they say, uh, check the eligibility criteria for step one. So here's the eligibility criteria. Citizenship, citizen of the U.S. Enrollment, must be enrolled in accredited colleges. Field of study, they identify that again, STEM, economics, or business. Then step two is choose an industry. So here they say, choose an industry or select where the application of one of the technologies below might be uncommon, in your opinion and describe which existing problems will be solved as a result. So this is you choosing an industry that you want to write your essay about. So here are your kind of industries, blockchain, any of these, metaverses, internet of things, augmented reality or virtual reality. So those are kind of the industries that you're allowed to write that essay topic about. Down here, it's write an essay. So it says, make sure that your essay meets the following requirements. So they break it down, simple enough. Format, it is essay as a PDF or Microsoft Word document. You're going to attach it in an email. Then the length, again, they say minimum of 1200 words, but there is no maximum word limit. And it should be original and not something that has been published somewhere else. The essay structure, they kind of break, you know, if you want to click and read all this, but basically introduction, main body and conclusion, those are the three things. You can jump in there and read the specifics if you want. Uh, then write an email, step four. So in your submission email, they want you to write a short paragraph or two about yourself, why you chose the topic that you chose. So about yourself, why you chose your topic. Then provide this information. So they give you a breakdown. This goes in the email. Your full name or parent guardian name if you're under 18, date of birth, college, university, average GPA, expected year of graduation, field of study, your phone number and email address so they can contact you, and proof of attendance acceptance from a college or university. So really pretty straightforward. And then finally, step six, it says congrats. This is the final step. So this is all the final kind of details you need to make sure you're paying attention to. Put this exactly, Pixelplex Scholarship Award, your name, that goes in the subject field of your email. Then you're going to check if you have provided all the required information and attach the files. Then you're going to send that email to scholarship at pixelplex.io. And that's it. That's the end. Now, here's some other information that you want to be aware of. Again, how can you find the results? They'll let you know in an email, and it's going to be within 31 calendar days of the deadline.
And then how do you actually get the, re the award? It's going to say a check is going to be sent to your residency or can be transferred via wire transfer. And again, the next deadline is June 5th, but then there's another one in December. And then here's a countdown for that due date. So that's kind of cool as well. And then additional things you might want to know. This is not a need-based scholarship. So it is a non-need-based scholarship. So that means it doesn't matter if your parents have a lot of money, you're still going to be able to be eligible for the scholarship. There's no fee. Uh, here's the submission information. And if you're an employee of Pixelplex or an immediate family member, you can't be eligible. It is paid out in dollars and taxes are your responsibility. Now, they also have past contacts and winners. So here you can simply look through and find people that won before and you can see what they wrote about and you can even see their essay. So go to full essay here. So that one's pretty cool because it allows you to actually see who wrote different things um, and what did they write? How did they write? And all that information can help you in order to create an essay that is in line with what they're looking for because you can see what past winners have written. So I really like that. I like when scholarships include past submissions so that you as an applicant have an idea of what it is that they're looking for. Next. So this scholarship is called the Stuck at Prom Scholarship. Now, how much is this scholarship? Well, it is up to $10,000. They do have a runner up prize, but if you win one of the two grand prizes, it's $10,000. When is it due? This scholarship application is due June 8th. Now, are you eligible? Well, in order to be eligible, you need to be a legal resident of the US, at least 14 years old. You have to be in high school or homeschooled at the high school level, and then you're eligible to apply. Now, what is it that you have to do? You have to create and wear prom attire. That means a dress or a tux out of duct tape, out of duck brand duct tape specifically. So this scholarship is hosted by the duck brand duct tape. What you have to do in order to win is to actually create some sort of formal attire, again, a dress or a tux, and it doesn't specify what gender you have to be to create one or the other, but just that it has to be a dress or a tux. And you can see examples, what we're about to show you different examples that you can get into. Um, and that's what you need to do. So what else should you know? You don't actually have to go to prom for this. And they removed this actually, you used to have to wear it to your prom. They removed this because of the pandemic because some schools weren't actually having proms, which makes sense. So I don't know if this is something in the future they may add that requirement back in, but currently you do have to wear it. They do want a photo of you wearing the attire that you created, but you don't actually have to attend your prom to do it. So you theoretically could even make this thing out of duct tape, wear this, take pictures of it, and then still actually go to your prom wearing whatever you want. All right. So, but just that the photos have to be of you wearing the creation that you made. So here's how to apply. We're going to jump over here into the website itself. Here we are. So stuck at prom scholarship contest duck brand. Now, if we go through here, look at these are some examples of the things that other people have made in the past. This is all made with duct tape. I mean, that's, that's pretty cool. So over $20,000 in cash scholarship prizes. So they're giving that away. We're gonna kind of skip through uh, some of this information that we already sort of talked about. Now, if you wanted to jump in and enter, this is the enter now, we're gonna come back to that, but here's how it works. So step one is create. You're gonna create and wear your original prom wear using duck brand duct tape and or duck brand crafting tape. Remember to take a high resolution pic of the big moment. And then you can see the official rules if you wanna click on that to get those official rules. Step two though is submit. So you're going to fill out the entry form, which we're going to kind of go through here in a second. And you're going to upload at least one picture of yourself in your duck prom wear and fill out more details. Don't forget to get your parents' permission if you're under 18. After you submit, a confirmation email will be delivered right to your inbox. And then step three is vote. So they select the winner by voting. So it's a kind of a popular vote. Uh, so if you have a favorite that you want to win, you can register and vote on the site using your email address. They want to hear um, the results. So something interest, uh, something to keep in mind for that is, again, you might want to promote what you did within your own friend group and family group and even at school to try to get more people to know that you did this so that they can vote for your outfit so that you'll be more likely to win. So that's kind of how it works. So going back up here, they, they do have official rules and prizes. Again, the runner up for each category is $500 right here. And then the grand prize for the dress is 10,000. Same thing, the tux category is 10,000 for the grand prize and 500 for the runner up. And again, you can look at past winners, what they did, which I mean, again, that's pretty cool. Um, so that was the 2021 grand prize winners, but we're going to scroll right back up here to the enter now. So I'm going to click on that. All right. So checklist, they say before you enter your information, let's make sure that you have what you need. So the checklist will help you so that you know what to expect when you get started. So here you go. You do need parental permission if you are under 18. 
Uh, you do need an essay and a video submission. Are you submitting a written essay or a video documenting your journey? Make sure you have all of that information ready to go. Video submissions should be no longer than three to five minutes, and they should be under 500 megabytes in size. And then you need your high resolution photos. So you can submit up to five, it says, five high resolution photos of your outfit. Each image should be no more than 10 megabytes. And then verify image use rights. Again, if you made it and it's your outfit, you should be all fine, but just make sure nobody else has rights to that. And so then say, let's go. So we jump right in, choose your prom wear. So we scroll down here, choose the category. So you're either in the dress category or the tux category. And so let's just say that we're in the tux category and then we go to next. And then tell us about yourself. So here's where you're gonna enter some information here. And then you're going to continue through the official rules. Now, I'm not gonna enter all this information. So when I say keep moving, it's gonna say, wait, you didn't fill all this out. So that's where I'm gonna end and leave the rest up to you so that we can jump, uh, so that you guys can jump back in. But I wanted you guys to know that's the, that's the website. That's how you do it. So you can go through those official rules, read all the specifics, but essentially you're going to have to do a video, an essay referencing the steps that you took, but then having the final product, that's really what's gonna make the big difference on that popular contest for who wins. So you definitely wanna create a cool looking tux or dress out of this duct tape and then submit it to this website. Next, this scholarship is called the Ocean Awareness Contest. Now, how much is it? This scholarship is up to $1,500, but remember there's more than one category that you can apply for. So potentially you could win more than that. Now, when is this due? June 13th is the due date for all the submissions that you're gonna do. Now, are you eligible? Well, this scholarship is open to students age 11 through 18. That's right, you heard 11 through 18. So we're talking middle school and high school students are eligible for this. And the cool thing that we'll get into is they're not actually competing against one another. There are two age categories. So 11 to 14 is one category and uh, 15 to 18 is the other category. So if you're a 14 year old, you're kind of at the cusp the high end of the younger category. So you definitely want to get your application in this year. All right, moving on. What is it that you have to do? You're going to have to create a submission. Now this can be in any of these categories. we got visual art, creative writing, film, interactive and multimedia, performing arts, music and dance, and poetry and spoken word. So those are the six different groups that you can apply for. Now here's how to apply. We're going to jump over into the web page here. All right. And this is a bow seat ocean awareness program. And so here we're going to scroll down to the contest overview. So here it says, this is the 11th annual ocean awareness contest it is a platform for young people to learn about environmental issues through art making and creative communication, explore the relationship to a changing world and become advocates for positive change. That's pretty cool. Students ages 11 to 18 from around the world are invited to participate. Now, the contest deadline is June 13th, 2022. Now, I did wanna highlight that they do say that this is a contest. This is not strictly a scholarship up here, the annual ocean awareness contest. So this is money that these students can win. It doesn't necessarily have to be saved or awarded or given to college, but this is another opportunity to win money to put towards college if that is the category that you are in, if you are searching for money for college. So, but understand that students can win this money and use it for whatever they want at whatever age they're winning. And you can win in the different categories. What I mean by that is uh, you can win in the junior category. And then once you get out of the junior category into the senior category, you can win again in the senior category. So once you jump from what, the younger to the older age group, you can win again. So again, something to keep in mind. Now, going down here, the theme is the funny thing about climate change. And so it says a creative challenge for teens worldwide. Uh, we're gonna jump down here to where it says, humor, satire, and irony are powerful communication tools. Yes, even for an issue serious as climate change, studies have shown that humor can break down barriers, empower people, and instill hope. So they want to encourage you to use humor or other ways um, in order to make your point. So again, what are innovative ways to creatively communicate about climate change? We consider humor, positivity, satire, parody, kitsch, irony, avant-garde, and more. These are just examples of things you can use in your submissions in these different categories. Now, this is again, the funny thing about climate change prompt. Use humor, positivity, irony, or other unconventional approaches that are not typically used in environmental communication to address the climate crisis. Think outside the tackle box beyond 
beyond cliches to create something that makes the topic of climate change and our oceans more approachable and accessible. Please feel free to expand on it. Do not feel limited and explore the resources studio for inspiration and start creating. So you can click on that. We're going to go ahead and continue down here where it talks about who may enter. Again, 11 to 18 from around the world, you're invited to participate in this contest. The junior division, once again, is ages 11 to 14, and the senior division is ages 15 to 18. Just be paying attention. It says students can participate as an individual or as a club, class, or a group of any size. So you could actually have your student's entire class participate as one. All students must provide contact information for an adult sponsor. That could be a teacher, could be a parent, a mentor, etc. And then students who have started college or university are not eligible to participate. So this is just for high school, middle school students. Now here again, the categories, visual art, poetry and spoken word, creative, uh, creative writing, film, performing arts being music and dance and interactive and multimedia. And then you can review the specific uh, submission requirements for each of those categories. They do have different requirements for each category. So uh, keep that in mind. And now if we click on how to enter, I already have the tab pulled up here, but if you click how to enter, it takes you to this page. So this is again, breaking down the review and the rules of eligibility. So again, ages 11 to 18, etc. And then down here is create. So again, here's the prompt. We already went through all this and then choose a category. Now they do again say, please review all submission requirements carefully. Students may submit one per category. So you may enter up to six pieces, one in each category. And here again are the categories. And this is where you're going to find the specific requirements. So let's just click on art, for example. So here are the different types. It could be drawing, painting, sculpting, graphic, digital art, coding, art and gifts, and mixed media and collage, printmaking, photography, ceramics, fashion and jewelry, data visualization, and infographics, um, or visit student work in this category. So you can see some examples. And then here are the specific things. Submit up to three images of your submission. Make sure they're high resolution, et cetera, et cetera. So you can see how this is not applicable to the poetry one, right? Like, so this is, so each of these creative writing, each category has their own set of uh, criteria that you need to follow. So I'm not gonna go through all six of them, but this is the page you would go to in order to click on that, open it up, look at the specific information you need for each of those. And then you do have to write a reflection addressing this, uh, your creative process, and what you have learned through the exploration of the contest and the theme, the funny thing about climate change. So here are kind of questions to guide your writing. What inspired your work? Why are you interested in the arts? What feeling did the process of creating raise for you? What's your message to viewers of your artwork, et cetera, et cetera. So again, these aren't questions you have to answer. It says up here, use the following questions to guide your writing. So this is just the type of information they're wanting you to put in that reflection. And again, it says a hundred words minimum, and it must be written in English. Just keep that in mind. And then you're going to submit. And actually I will click on this one for, to break down this. So again, you can start creating stuff. The contest opens in September. So guess what? If you don't win this June, then in September of 2022 is likely when they're going to open up next contest. So you can go ahead and jump in for starting to create something for next year's summer thing. So you don't have to wait all the way until May or June in order to do this. So they accept submissions from September to June, then they are reviewing them. And then in November here is when you're actually going to get information about you know who won and the winners will become announced. So that's important to keep track of that timeline there. And remember though, the deadline is June 13th. So here's your submission checklist, your contact information, your submission, obviously, a title for the submission, written reflection, works cited if applicable, contact information for the adult supervisor for all participants, and then parent guardian consent if you are under 13 years of age. So once you make an account and start a submission, you will have the opportunity to save your work and continue at another time. So I know that that was a lot, right? Um, that was a lot of information all at once, but that's how you apply because there are six different categories and each one of them you could win up to $1,500 as young as age 11. 11, you can start winning this. And I guarantee you, I don't have 11 year olds watching my YouTube channel. At least I'm pretty confident I don't. Uh, but you might have younger siblings or if you're an adult watching this, your children. So definitely check this out. An opportunity for somebody as young as 11 to start winning money that you can use for whatever, but you can apply as scholarship money towards paying for college. Next. Now this scholarship is called the Ethel Hayes Destigmatization of Mental Health Scholarship. Now how much is this scholarship worth? So there are actually two awards of $4,250. Now when is it due? You're going to want to apply for this one before June 14th. That's the deadline. Are you eligible for this scholarship? 
Well, in order to be eligible, you have to have struggled with mental health or have a loved one who has struggled with mental health. So all students where this criteria applies, this is for you. What is it that you're going to have to do? There's a 200 to 1,000 word essay that you'll need to write in order to apply. So let's jump straight in to the website. All right, here we are. This is bold.com who's offering this again, the Ethel Hayes Destigmatization of Mental Health Scholarship. A total of $8,500, but that's because there's two winners for $4,250 each. Now, you could just click apply now straight there, but we're going to go down a little bit further. Again, the deadline here is June 14th, so checking that out. Education level any. So down here, they kind of explain a little bit. It says, suicide is the 10th leading cause of death in the United States. It's the second leading cause of death for college-age youth. Suicide often stems from past mental trauma and depression caused by bullying, mistreatment, and other challenging events. Nearly 50 years ago, my mom, Ethel Hayes, took her own life. And kind, a kind and courageous woman, she struggled to cope with the difficult, difficult realities of her inner and outer world. After the aftermath of her passing, I struggled to cope with the loss. Outside of the tragedy of losing my mom, I faced the reality that mental health was not well understood or openly discussed in the black community. So I suppressed my feelings, an approach that caused many challenges for me later in life. So to help millions of people and their loved ones who are suffering, we need to start by bringing the darkness to light. In doing so, it will slowly fade. So in honor of my wonderful mother, the Ethel Hayes Destigmatization of Mental Health Scholarship exists to support more open and honest dialogue about the millions of people who are struggling with mental health and those people who have loved ones who are struggling with mental health. Again, the scholarship is open to all students who have had challenges with mental health or who have loved ones who have struggled with mental health. So to apply, you will be asked to write a short essay about how your journey with mental health has impacted your beliefs, relationships, and aspirations. So this is the topic of the essay. All right, how your journey with mental health, that's either your mental health or that of a loved one, has impacted your beliefs, relationships, and aspirations. And again, once, once again, here's the essay topic and 200 to 1,000 words. And so if you meet that criteria, you're just going to write your essay and hit apply now. And again, you'll have to create a bold.com account in order to do that. But just so that you know, here are winners and finalists. This is from July of 2021. So these are past winners and finalists. Now, I want to just highlight, you know, mental health. I, I totally resonate with everything that they're talking about in this application, in this actual description of what this lady went through. Now, no, my parents have not committed suicide, but I know people that have. My wife has had family members that that has happened to. So it is 100% real and valid. So if this is affecting you, your mental health personally, I highly recommend getting professional help if you need it for, uh, to deal with some of these issues that would otherwise, like she described, you just sort of suppress it and it doesn't come out for years. So I, I would highly recommend if you feel like you need any assistance with your mental health, please, please seek out help. And if your family members also are struggling with anything related to mental health or suicidal thoughts, things like that, seek out help for that sooner than later because if, if you wait till later it might be too late so get, start to get the help that you need today but also this is an opportunity for you to win some scholarship money because of the story and the journey that you're on so i just want to help with that destigmatization de of mental health because i understand the struggle is real all right next this scholarship is called the probo medical scholarship how much is this scholarship this scholarship is $500. Now, some people might see 500 bucks and be like, ah, not worth my time. But because that's what most people are thinking and they're going, ah, 500 bucks, probably not worth my time. That means you're not competing against as many people, right? Higher competition, less likely to win. Lower competition, more likely to win. So even though it's only 500 bucks instead of a thousand or more, like most people uh, are looking for, that means less people are probably applying. So if you apply for this one, you have a higher shot. Now, continuing, when is it due? This one is due June 21st. Now, are you eligible for this scholarship? Well, here's the sort of specifics that you need to know. You have to be enrolled in an accredited high school, college, or university in the U.S. Now, either you have to be in your final year of high school, so a senior, or already enrolled at the undergraduate level and in good standing. You have to be at least 16 years old, attending a U.S.-based institution with a GPA of 3.0 or higher. Now, what is it that you're going to have to do? A 1500 word essay. Now that's a 1500 max word essay, so you can write less than that, but typically when they give those maximums, they want you to write close to that amount or they would make the maximum lower. So a 1500 word 
essay. Now here's how to apply. We're gonna jump over here into the website itself. Here we are at Provo Medical. And this is the scholarship. It says, we are now accepting scholarship applications for 2022. And uh, they want healthcare to be more accessible, more easily accessible for all. So that means supporting future medical professionals. Now you don't actually have to be trying to study as a medical professional for this scholarship, even though their goal is in relation to future medical professionals. So it says, we are excited to award this to decrease the burden of educational costs for those pursuing degrees in the medical field. We hope to play a small part in helping students achieve their educational goals with a $500 scholarship. So to apply, you must submit original essay up to 1500 words, which we already said, and it's going to describe how you want to make healthcare more accessible and affordable and why doing so is important to you and the world. So they say since that's their goal and all that they do, they want to you to begin thinking about it as well. Now it does say here, any student planning for a medical or veterinary career is especially encouraged to enter. However, students on any career path are also welcome to apply. So like I said earlier, it's not required that you be studying a medical field uh, education. It, uh, it is encouraged, but anybody studying anything can apply. So requirements for entry. We already talked about this. Enrolled in an accredited school, uh, either in your final year, 16 years attending U.S. base, you must have a GPA of 3.0 or higher. And again, entries June 21st. Additional information here. It does say no emailed or fax entries are accepted. You do have to use the submission form in, uh, in this, uh, on this webpage. No additional materials or documentations like tax returns or letters of recommendation are needed or accepted. So they don't want any letters of recommendation or anything else. And each entry should include the following. A Word document copy of your essay with completed contact information on each page. And this says here, full name, address, email address, and phone number. So they want this on each page. And then you have to have a statement or transcript showing your current GPA. Unofficial transcripts are accepted. And here's the actual application form right here on the website, like they said. So uh, all this information you need to put in here and then choose a file to upload your GPA. Choose a file to upload your actual document, your essay itself, and then submit. And boom, that's it. All done. So that's all you have to do. Pretty straightforward. Next. All right. This is the Digital Privacy Scholarship. Now, how much is this scholarship? You could win $1,000 with this scholarship. Now, it is due on June 30th. And are you eligible? We want to highlight the eligibility requirements so that you can be anywhere from a high school freshman all the way through a graduate student and still be eligible to apply. So that's a pretty wide range. So if you're a freshman or if you have a younger sibling that's a freshman, you can start applying for this scholarship right now. And you do have to be a US citizen or resident. Now, what do you have to do? So there's multiple rounds for this scholarship. So round one, you'll do right on the web page and it's 140 characters sort of tweet type of message. Just short little, um, you know, 140 characters, not that long. If you end up being one of the top 10 finalists, then you get to go to the finalist round, which is a 500 to 1000 word essay. So it depends on if you get to that round, but if you don't, all you're doing is 140 character message. So here's how to apply. Let's jump over to the website and I will show you exactly what you need to do. So here's the website. It says digital privacy scholarship. Let's go over here. They do say it's important to understand that almost anything you post on the internet is neither temporary nor private. Posting too much information can have devastating consequences. And it says here, 43% of employers who checked on social media have decided not to hire somebody according to Career Builder survey. So that's 12% of college admissions officers who checked Facebook decided not to admit an applicant according to a Kaplan test prep survey. 12% of college admissions officers who checked Facebook decided not to take you, all right? You, most of the people looking at this, because you're looking at scholarships, you're trying to get to college. If you are applying for colleges, understand the type, type of information you put on your social media, your private social media can affect your application. So here's the actual application form. So uh, put your year, your name, all this information down here, uh, college you may be attending, describes your intent, major of study. And then here's your 140 character statement that complies with that, that completes this sentence. I'm taking responsibility for my digital profile by and then 140 characters. And then you're going to enter who may apply. You must be a high school freshman, sophomore, junior, senior, or currently in college as an undergraduate or graduate student of any level. Homeschool students are also eligible. There's no age limit and you do it to be a citizen. So we talked about that. Complete the application with 140 character and the top 10 applicants will be finalists. Then you write the full essay. Again, June 30th is the deadline. Here's how they're gonna select the winners um, and based on creativity and the winner will receive 
thousand dollars next this scholarship is called the advocates law scholarship now how much is this scholarship this scholarship is up to one thousand dollars for those that win when is it due well this scholarship is due in june on june 30th so i know this is this summer i know people got other things going on but try not to miss this deadline for an opportunity to win one thousand dollars now are you eligible for this scholarship so it says all prospective or current students enrolled in an accredited university or college located within the United States are eligible to apply. So what is it that you have to do? You're going to have to write an essay, 300 to 500 words, not one of the longest essays. So it shouldn't take you too long to write this essay. Now, what else should you know about this scholarship? Well, it's also due January 31st. So this is another example of a biannual scholarship. This is due in the summer and in the winter. So the other due date is January 31st. Now here's how to apply. We're gonna jump straight into the scholarship website here for Advocates Law Scholarship. And we're gonna kind of scroll down a little bit past some of this stuff up here and get into the scholarship requirements. Now they do want you to go to their Instagram, follow them, comment about yourself, where you're from, that kind of stuff and tag other people. Yeah, it's not a big deal, but go, yeah, just go to their Instagram and tag some stuff, but but they just, it's more to promote them. That's really what that's about is for them to be promoted through that effort. But if it wins you a thousand dollars, like not a big deal. It says, again, all, pros all prospective and current students enrolled in schools uh, may submit an application. Coming down here for the scholarship deadline, it says, once again, it's offered by annually. So it's either January 31st or June 30th. Now the scholarship amount is $1,000 offered twice a year. And now here's what you need to know about the application. You're going to write this 300 to 500 word essay on the following topic. So here's your topic. What are some of the problems we face on the roads? How can you contribute to improve road safety? What laws, if any, could be changed to accomplish the goal of making streets safer for everyone? Now, they do specify essays should uh, follow a basic essay in paragraph format, including an introduction with a thesis statement, body paragraph and a conclusion. And then here are the scholarship terms and conditions. So you are agreeing to the terms, namely that the rights of ownership, uh, regardless of whether you are selected as a winner, basically you're saying that your essay is now going to be owned by this law firm once you submit it. Only your email and phone number will be used to contact you concerning the scholarship. They will not provide this to any third party. So your name and the name of your school may be used if you're selected as a prize winner or a part of an honorable mention. That means they might put that information on the website. And so if you do not fill out all the necessary information, you forfeit your consideration for the scholarship. And as previously mentioned, if you are selected as the winner, they will contact you through email or phone. And the award will be sent directly to your accredited institution. They'll also want to get a profile photo of you to be included with your scholarship on the scholarship page, like this. Here's their previous winner for 2022. So for this is from January. So that's a photo that he included. And this is the example. And this is an example of the essay. And so here it says, please submit your information and essay in the form below. If you have any questions about it, though, you can uh, contact them at scholarships at lawdbd.com. So here's the actual information where you'll submit it. Put all this information in here on the school ID it's, or on the website here itself and upload your file for your essay. Hit submit and you're entered. So that is how you would enter on this particular website. Pretty straightforward, pretty simple. Next, this scholarship is called the Delete Cyberbullying Scholarship. Now, how much is this one? This one's a thousand dollar scholarship. Now, when is it due? This one's due at the end of the month, June 30th. Now, are you eligible? Well, in order to be eligible, you have to be a high school freshman or all the way up to a college graduate student. So anything in between freshman, sophomore, junior, senior in high school or undergraduate or graduate student in college and you're eligible. Now, what is it that you have to do? Well, it's a 500 word maximum essay. So here's how to apply. We're going to jump straight into the website and go through right with you. All right. Delete cyberbullying. Here's the scholarship website. And if we go down here, it says the award is uh, in an effort to get students to committed to the cause of deleting cyberbullying. We're offering this thousand dollar scholarship. So how to apply? You must be in high school or college or a graduate student attending or planning to attend, enter into an accredited U.S. college or university. And then you have to complete this application or you can print the application and mail it if that's uh, your choice. Now, selection is based on the written statement and focused on creativity, content and commitment to the cause of deleting cyberbullying. Now, here's the deadline, June 30th. We talked about that, and we're going to jump straight into this application. So first, last name, address, city, state, etc. Postal code, email address, 
uh, the high school or college you're attending or plan to attend. And at the time, this is where you would just select what grade you're in. And then look, here's the essay. You're gonna answer one, not both. So option one, option two, pick one of them and you're gonna write a 500 word or less essay. So option one is why is it important to work to delete cyberbullying? Option two is how has cyberbullying personally affected you? What's nice is they give you the option here to recognize like you might not experience cyberbullying directly, but you can still apply for this scholarship by addressing option one, which is why is it important to work to delete cyberbullying? So even if you haven't been personally affected by it in terms of receiving it, you may know somebody that's been affected by it. You can still answer this question. And then if you have personally been affected by it, I would probably choose option two. So you can talk about your personal experience. And then that's going to be, you're going to scroll down here and hit submit. And that's it for this one. Next, again, this scholarship is called the Do Over Scholarship. And how much is it? $1,500. $1,500 is actually pretty good considering what you have to do is not that much for this scholarship. Now, when is it due? June 30th is when this scholarship is due. Now, are you eligible? In order to be eligible for this one, that you have to be a student in the United States, a legal US resident, and at least 14 years of age at the time of application. So what is it that you're gonna have to do? A 250 word essay. That's it, 250 words. All right, that's why I said 1500 bucks for a 250 word essay, not that much. All right, so here's how to apply. We're gonna jump over here into the actual website. So this is another Unigo scholarship, do over scholarship, scrolling down. 1500 bucks due June 30th, and you can see previous winners or just go straight to apply now. But let's take a quick look here. Look, mistakes, we've all made them. Too bad life doesn't always give you a mulligan, or does it? <laughs> what if you had a chance to do over a moment in your life? What would it be? How would it affect you in your future? What we learn from our mistakes can often be invaluable, but we're here to help you uh, put a price to it. While we can't undo the past, this fun scholarship is available to students looking for a unique way to earn free college money. So uh, don't let applying for this scholarship be that do-over moment for you. So again, it says you have to be a United States student and you must be at least 14 years old. And here is the written response question. It says, if you could get one do-over in life, what would it be and why? So if you could get one do-over in life, what would it be and why? 250 words or less. So that's it. So if you want to additionally download my free PDF, it has not only the link to this scholarship website, but all my June scholarship websites uh, so that you can check out all the scholarships I have due in the month of June. It's free, it's clickable so that you can click and it'll link right to those web pages. It gives you brief descriptions of eligibility and requirements so you can sift through and help stay organized so you don't have to go back and click on scholarships in June that you aren't eligible for. So it highlights all of that information. And as well, I have a course that goes through a seven step strategy for paying for college, making it more affordable or even completely free. So if you're interested in checking that out, I do have a course that's linked down in the description. And as well, if you wanna to continue to watch scholarship videos, then you can check this playlist out for all the information I have about scholarships and other examples, or you can check out this video that YouTube is recommending you watch next. Either way, put your comments or questions down in the comment section. I'll answer as many as I can, and we will see you in the next one.